Hi guys, Marcia here with KGB Style, and I'm sharing my spring sew along with Nomi Patterns ME 2027. This is a chic, fun, 70s inspired vintage look with kulak pants or shorts, depending on your view. It has flutter sleeves, oversized collar, button down front, and a zip crotch. Um, it also comes with a belt that cinches the waist, and my favorite part, you guys know I love contrasting. This piece has three contrasting colors and the middle trim goes down the front and the back to give that slimming appeal. This pattern goes well with any drapey, uh, lightweight fabric that's gonna give you the movement. This one is in a rayon fabric. Today, so along will be done in a lightweight linen, which is also doable. So if you're ready to get sewing on this pattern, let's get started. For this sew along, I'll be cutting view A. You can always refer to the back of your pattern for fabric suggestions, size and measurements, fabric yardage, and notions. For today's sew along, I'll be using a fabric covered buckle and four regular buttons. But note you can use fabric covered buttons for the pattern and a regular buckle. If this is your first time sewing, don't forget to review your pattern instructions for pattern markings and suggested cutting layouts. I've posted the pattern pieces you will need to cut. Don't forget to mark all your notches and dots before getting started and apply your interfacing. These are suggested fabrics for this pattern. I'll be using lightweight linen fabric for this sew along, so if your pattern pieces are ready, let's get started. First, let's apply our darts to our bodice. I like to pin my darts in place, matching the dots, and once they're pinned, I'll take it to the machine and give it a stitch. Give your darts a good press, pressing the seam down so that they're nice and neat. And don't forget to apply darts to both bodice pieces. Next, we're gonna grab our upper front band, which is pattern piece two, and we're gonna stitch one fourth seam line on the unmarked edge of the upper front band like this. Don't forget to pivot at the dot in the corner. Once you're finished stitching your one fourth seam line, clip to the small dot at the inner corner, being careful not to clip through the stitching. Then we're gonna press under the raw edge along this stitching line. Go ahead and complete the other upper front band for the other side the same way. Next, we're gonna take our bodice side front and our band, and we're gonna pin the band on the outside of the bodice side front, matching the notches and small dots, having the raw edges even. Once you have your band pinned in place, we'll take the bodice front to the machine and Face the raw edges together. Once your raw edges are basted, we're gonna pin down the pressed edge of the band and take the bodice to the machine and edge stitch the pressed edge. For this part, you can use a standard presser foot or an edge foot. I'm using my edge foot for this, but either way works. Don't forget to stop and pivot 
at the dot in the inner corner by lifting your presser foot. Go ahead and give your bodice a quick press after stitching before we move on to the next step. Your bodice side front pieces are complete. Let's move on to the bodice front. First, reinforce your inner corners of the bodice front and then clip to the small dot, being careful not to clip through your stitching. Do this for both bodice front pieces. Next, with the right sides together, we're gonna pin our bodice side front to the front section, matching our small dots and our notches. Once the pieces are pinned, we'll take it to the machine and stitch it. In order to create nice crisp corners for this piece, it's important to pivot at your dots. When you get to the corner where your dots meet, make sure to leave your needle in the dot while lifting your presser foot and turning the corner before releasing the presser foot and continuing onto the next side. Once both bodice pieces are complete, press the seam toward the bodice front and let's move on to the bodice back. First, we need to finish our upper back bands in the same manner that we did our upper front bands. First, stitch along a fourth seam line on an unmarked edge of the upper back band, pivoting at the corner dots. Then clip to the inner corner, being careful not to clip through the stitching. Do this for both pieces. Then press under the raw edge along the stitching. Next, we're going to take our upper back band and pin the band to the bodice back, matching the notches and having raw edges even. I'm going to go ahead and baste the raw edges together. After you base the raw edges, you're going to edge stitch in the same manner that you did the bodice front. Remember, you can use an edge stitch presser foot or you can use your standard presser foot. This time I will use my standard presser foot, making sure to lift and pivot at the corners just to show you you can use either one. Once the bodice side back pieces are complete, we're going to take the bodice back section number four and with the right sides together we're going to pin the side back to the back matching the notches in the dots. Once you've pinned and they're secure take it to your machine and give it a stitch. Press the seams toward the center back and let's go ahead and create our back pleat. To make the pleats on the center back, go ahead and fold along the solid lines which you should have already marked, bring in the folds to the broken lines and pin each side. Take it to the machine and baste across the raw edges. I'm gonna go ahead and give my pleat a good press before I move on to the next step. Now let's complete our bodice back. Grab your yoke back, piece number seven, and with right sides together and notches matching, 
pin the yoke back to the upper edge of the back. Once you're pinned and secure, take it to the machine and give it a stitch. After stitching, go ahead and finish your seams if you haven't already, and let's go ahead and give it a press. Make sure to press the seam up towards the yoke. Now we're going to take our front bodice pieces and our back bodice piece with the right sides together. We're going to secure the shoulders in the side seams with pins or clips. Now you can go ahead and stitch your shoulders in your side seams. Once that is done, stay stitched the neck edge of the garment. Now grab your collar pieces, which is piece eight. Machine stitch five eighths from the notched edge of the collar. Afterwards, clip to the stitching at the small dots. And then we'll take these two pieces and secure them together with pins with right sides facing. Once your collar is pinned with the right sides together, stitch the facing piece to the collar, leaving the notched edge open. Trim the seams in the corners and then press under 5 eighths on the raw edge between the clips. We're going to understitch the collar as far as possible, pushing the seam allowance towards the uninterfaced collar piece and stitching as close to the seam as possible. Now that that's done, turn your collar inside out and press. Now we're ready to attach our collar to the garment. On the outside, pin your collar to the neck edge. The face and side should be up. You're going to match your centers, place your small dots at the shoulder seams, and match your remaining large dots. Also, you want to clip the neck edge of the garment to the stay stitching. This allows you a little more ease to fit the collar to the neck when you're pinning and sewing. Once you're done pinning the collar to the neckline, you can now take it to the machine and baste the collar to the neck edge. When basting the collar to the neck, you want to be sure to leave the pressed edge of the facing free between the small dots. Once the collar is based to the neckline, we're going to move on to the sleeve. So with my sleeve sections, I'm going to go ahead and create the creases for my narrow hem. I'm going to take section 10, which are my sleeve pattern pieces, and I'm going to use my iron to create a crease where my narrow hem will go. For this part, you also have the option of using a rolled hem presser foot or narrow hem presser foot. But for this project, I'm going to turn my hem under manually. Now with the right sides together, match the raw edges of your sleeve seam, pin it, and take it to the machine and stitch it. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hem your sleeve. We're going to attach our sleeve to our garment. With the right sides together, we're going to pin the sleeve into the armhole, placing the center small dot at the shoulder seam. 
and matching all the notches and remaining dots. Once the entire sleeve is pinned, you can take it to the machine and stitch it. Finish your second sleeve and attach it to the armhole. Now we're moving on to the pants front and back. Grab your lower front band and prep it as you did your bodice bands by pressing under the raw edge along the stitching line. Now we're gonna grab our pants side front, which is piece number 14. And on the outside, we're gonna pin the band to the pants side front matching the notches and having the raw edges even. Now just as we did with our previous bands, we're gonna take this to the machine and we're gonna base the raw edges together and edge stitch the pressed edge of the band. Go ahead and complete this with the remaining lower front and back bands. Next, we're gonna take our side front and pants front, matching up the raw edges and matching the notches. We're gonna pin or clip straight down the front seam. Do this for both sides, then take it to the machine and stitch down the front seam. If you haven't already, go ahead and reinforce the front at the large dot and clip to the large dot. We're gonna to begin to construct our fly. First pin the front sections together at the center front and stitch between the large dot and the notch. Then turn in left front opening edge along the 5 8 seam line and press. Next, we're gonna place the closed zipper with the face up under the left front opening edge, having the pressed edge close to the zipper teeth and the zipper stop about a half an inch from the upper edge. Go ahead and pin this in place. Once the left side of your zipper is pinned, take it to the machine and using a zipper foot, we're gonna baste the zipper and the fabric close to the pressed edge. When you're done, set your garment aside. We're gonna to move to the lower front facing. I went ahead and finished the side and lower edges of my lower front facing. So now I'll press under five eighths on the notched edge of the lower front facing. Then trim about three eighths of an inch off of the pressed edge. Next, on the inside, we're going to pin the face into the left front opening edge over the zipper and matching the large dots. Make sure you pin the pressed edge of the facing over the zipper tape, clearing the zipper teeth. Now you can go ahead and baste along your previous basting. Then on the outside, using a zipper foot, we're gonna stitch close to the pressed edge of the front through all the layers. 
making sure to catch in the pressed edge of the facing on the inside. I went ahead and surged and finished that outer edge of the remaining lower front facing section and now I'm going to pin the facing to the right front opening edge matching the notches in the large dots. Go ahead and take this to the machine and stitch it pivoting at the corner and ending at the large dot. You're going to trim and understitch your facing, pressing the seam towards the facing and stitching close to the seam. When you're done, turn the face into the inside and give it a press. Lap the right front over the left, matching the centers, and give it another press. When you're ironing over your zipper, make sure your iron is on a lower setting so as you don't melt your zipper. Once your zipper fly is in place, baste close to the edge through all thickness. Let's open out our fly facing and pin the remaining zipper tape to the fly facing. When pinning, be certain the right front is free and you're not pinning it to the facing. Let's take it to the machine and stitch it down. Using a zipper foot, stitch close to the zipper teeth along the center of the zipper tape. Let's complete the fly by stitching the lower front as basted on the outside and remove the center front basting. At this time, you can also go ahead and baste the upper edge of the right fly. If you haven't already, go ahead and construct your lower back pant by bringing together the side back and the pants back. Match up the raw edges with the right sides together, pin and stitch down the back seam. Now we're going to stitch the front and the back together at the inner leg edges, stretching the back to fit the front between the upper edge and the notch. Go ahead and pin it and then take it to your machine and give it a stitch. Once the inner leg is stitched, we're going to pin the remainder of the crotch seam and then stitch the seam to the small circle in the front. You're also going to want to stitch it again a fourth of an inch away in the seam allowance along the curve. This adds extra support. Go ahead and serge and finish the edges of your pocket. We're going to construct the pocket seams. First, pin one pocket section to the side edge of the front, matching the notches and the dots. Then we're going to pin one pocket section to the side edge of the back, matching the notches and the dots. Take it to the machine and stitch a fourth inch seam.
Press your seam towards the pockets and understitch the pocket fronts. Now we're going to line up our pocket front and back, matching the seams, matching the notches in the dots. With your clips or your pins, you're going to pin them together. Be sure to pin down the full seam of the leg, matching notches and dots. Do this for both sides, and then we're going to take it to the machine, and we're going to stitch it. We're going to stitch the front and the back together at the side, starting and stopping between the large circles, making sure to leave an opening for the pocket. Stitch around the pocket, and starting at the second large circle, be sure to stitch the entire side seam of the leg. Now you should have the finished bodice and the lower part of your jumper. Grab both of them and we're going to bring the top and the bottom together and pin it. So with the right sides together, pin the pants to the lower edge of the bodice, matching the seams and the notches and having the finished edges at the large dots. When pinning, also make sure that your band seams match up on the front and the back. Once the top half and the bottom half are pinned together, take it to the machine and give it a stitch. Now you can go ahead and turn your jumpsuit right side out and make sure that all your bands and your seams are matching on the front and the back. Go ahead and give it a press and let's move on to the front facing. I went ahead and searched the unnotched edge of the upper facing front, machine stitch a half an inch from the neck edge of the facing. I also clip the neck edge to the stitching. And you will need to press under 5 eighths of an inch on the shoulder and the lower edge of the facing. Do this for both of your upper front facing pieces to prepare your facing. Now with the right sides together, we're going to pin the face into the front and the neck edge. Do this for both sides of your facing. Once you're done, you can take it to the machine so we can baste and stitch. Now you can baste and stitch the front and the neck edge of your collar. Be sure to keep the pointed edge of the collar free, being careful not to catch the free edge of the collar. Once you're done, you can trim the seams and clip the curves.
went ahead and understitched my facing and slip stitched my collar and the facing at the shoulder and lower edges. Give it a press and let's move on. We're going to complete the belt. So grab your belt section 19. It should already be interfaced. So let's fold the belt piece in half lengthwise with the right sides together along the fold line and pin down the full length of the belt. Once you finish pinning, we're going to take it to the machine and stitch the outer edges, leaving the straight end open, and then we'll trim the seam. So I went ahead and turned my belt inside out and gave it a press. I pressed under a fourth of an inch on the raw edge. This end will be threaded through the belt buckle. I'm using a fabric covered belt buckle, so let's go ahead and get started. I follow the instructions on the back of the belt buckle package to apply the fabric to my belt buckle. I pressed one side of the adhesive applicator to my fabric and carved out the stencil as directed on the instructions. I exposed the adhesive on the second side of the sticker and placed my buckle face down onto the adhesive Pressing the edges in and covering the buckle completely. I clip the corners and work the bulk of the fabric into the grooves, making sure every edge was smooth and that the buckle was fully covered. Then I finish the buckle by securing the raw edges with the buckle back. Once your belt buckle is covered, you can thread the end of the belt through the opening in the buckle and fold the end along the fold line. You can slip stitch or edge stitch the inner pressed edge on the belt to finish the belt. To finish your jumper, apply your buttonholes and buttons using your buttonhole guide and finish the edge of your pants with a narrow hem.